conceptual people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements perspective what I believe would happen what the uh, implications of it could be how it could be played and while a lot of people were sitting up and uh, you know wishing that it killed him and laughing and everything I told you that it was a play first and foremost for a guy who's downplayed this virus from day one for the White House his administration and he himself to be so eager to acknowledge that he had it it had to be coming from somewhere and going somewhere and those are the things we tend to miss we tend to miss the play we're so busy busy caught up in our own emotional draft our current that we miss the play we miss what the whole thing is about we're moving uh, at the speed of light based on emotion and we're failing to think critically about what happened. I told you, I said the worst case scenario for Dem Dems and I'm not supporting Dems or Republicans. I'm saying the worst case scenario for Dems is for Trump to survive this. Now, I, at the time, I'm thinking it's going to go at least 14 days. He's going to get through the 14 day quarantine period and he's going to come out talking about how well he survived it and how he overcame it and you know and all these things and then he was going to turn around and say at the age of 73 I think he's 73 I was able to survive it it's not this big you know basically to downplay it even more and to make it look like that Tim's created a monster that didn't really exist and that it wasn't that big of a deal. I'm not calling it one way or another. This is not about COVID. This is about the, the play on the election. He's already doing it. He didn't even wait the 14 days. He's already doing it. He's already talking about how he overcame and how easy it was, how great it was. And he's making that move. And it was predictable. But you have to actually be thinking. You have to actually be engaged. You have to actually look around. My whole thing is, I said this from the beginning, if Dems were going to use the same playbook that they used uh, for 2016, they're going to get the same results. Keep underestimating why a large conservative block is behind this guy. Keep underestimating the urge of an extreme conservative uh, region uh, uh, of Republicans and some Democrats who see this guy beyond his exterior as some symbol of a new era or the protection of an old. And it's being sold on both sides. And yet, we're sitting around and looking at it a lot a lot of people myself i'm not included in that i'm not looking for dems or republicans to come along and save the day they created this mess um in 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 in, in a uh, somewhat unified manner and what i mean by that is while they appear not to be working together there are two wings right wing left wing that belong to the same bird. I've said this before. That bird has been shitting on black people for 400 years in this country. Plus, before slavery began, it was shitting on people. So we have to be aware of what's going on. Before that was a democratic party, they were shitting on us. Uh, look, our goal is to liberate ourselves and empower ourselves. That is not going to be done by attempting to get a group of people to shift and change the way things are done. You know, there are a lot of people who are sitting around. I'm actually at my destination 
Uh, but I want to finish this. There are a lot of people who are in the uh, I didn't realize the air was that. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard all that air. All right, there we go. Uh, sorry about that. But look. Damn, I thought I'd turn that down. All right, look. There are a lot of people out there that will point to a lot of conservatives that will present the idea that racism in this country doesn't exist, that there are no uh, disadvantages to being black, that blacks are where they're at because they fail to pull themselves up by their bootstraps and, and on and on. They'll point to different um, stratums of data to try to prove their point. And anytime I see that, I laugh. And there are some pretty hefty uh, people doing it that have been given a platform by the system to rebut what can't be ignored. There's this thing in research, in scientific research, that's uh, called statistical significance. And what statistical significance is, it's a point within an observation where there is a significant uh, portion, percentage, number that is being impacted in any type of way being studied at a level that it cannot be contributed to coincidence, it cannot be contributed to any, uh, any form of happenstance. It has to be explained, it has to be accounted for, there has to be an explanation of why. The things that have happened to black people over the course of the last 150 years since the Emancipation Proclamation was signed has to be observed. Uh, there are statistically significant numbers in almost every socioeconomic category, every penal or criminal category. Um, and you're either going to have to say that blacks are inherently intellectually uh, inferior, which has been proven not to be the case, or you're going to have to say there are some things standing in the way. And they're there. If you research them, they're obviously there. I've written about them in multiple books, everything from the education system, the, uh, the workforce, uh, the political system, um, um, home ownership, the way home ownership is valued for blacks is different than it is for whites. The way uh, tax, uh, property tax is appraised is different than whites. It's amazing that resale value is lower for a black family, same comparable house as the white family. It's lower for blacks, but the appraisal is actually higher. This is a statistical study that's done, and you can find this across the board. You find studies from multiple universities that show that companies will not call back uh, applicants with ethnic sounding names that can be associated with being black. It's proof. I'm just over and over again, there are these things out there that you have to acknowledge and you have to look at. And I'm talking just really superficial stuff. This thing runs deep. Uh, different things are in place. Redlining is actually still a thing. It's just being done in such a subtle way that it cannot be easily pinpointed. But if you pay attention, it's still a part of what's going on, making it more difficult for blacks to build wealth and home ownership than whites. It's a longer journey, a more strenuous journey, and a more tedious journey, even when you take the same path. And so that's that. But I said all that to say, we need to be focused on those things. We need to be focused on how we're going to deal with this. The thing is, whether it's Trump or Biden, neither one is going to come along and rescue you from the situation, the places, and the circumstances that we find ourselves in. That's going to be something that we're going to have to do ourselves. That's going to be something that we're going to actually have to come together. We are suffering from a, a, a lack of capacity and ability to unite, to come together, to find common ground. We are far too conditioned and trained to find where we don't agree, to find dis, uh, discord and to focus on it and to hammer on it and to attack one another. We will find any freaking reason not to work with or back someone. You don't have to agree on, there's absolutely no one in this world who I'm going to agree with 100%. No one who's gonna agree with me 100%. Anybody that does is questionable to me. 
I'm not looking for yes men or yes women. I'm looking for people that's going to challenge me, that's going to come and say, hey, you need to do this. I am never going to tolerate disrespect because that's something different. You can disagree with a person without being disrespectful. Disrespectful speaks to your character. Disrespect speaks to your own level of self-love and self-respect. Um, and so that's a whole nother thing that I'll deal with on another day. But uh, this whole thing, I told you what was going to happen with it. It's because simply I pay attention. I look at it. I'm not driven by emotion. I'm not sitting up there oh, because I feel a certain way about Trump. Trump, that was literally a slip. That was not me doing that on purpose. Uh, Trump doesn't mean that I automatically go vote vote for Biden. This 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 idea of the lesser of two evils is foolish. It's first of all, it's never worked for us. In the last sixty years, we have literally increased in voter participation. Every voters uh, every election cycle, we increase. We send out more people, and ninety percent of the people we send out to vote vote Democrat. How's that turned out for us? First and foremost. In that, we have also suffered in every socioeconomic marker there is. Academia, wealth building, the wealth gap is widening, political influence, uh, mass incarceration in, 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 in the way the system is structured and impacts us uh, disproportionately. We could go on and we could talk about all these different ways that we are actually regressing uh, since before uh, the civil rights movement. The civil rights movement actually put us at a disadvantage. That could not be integration without there being a marginalization of a black economic base. We gave up our base so that we could participate in theirs and we have not recovered from that. Those are the things we need to focus on. But I just wanted to point out this whole idea of voting for the less of two evils and thinking that a person who has spent 40 years mishandling us is all of a sudden going to come along because he doesn't say things as bold and as stupid and as egregious as the other person that he's somehow better. He's moved quietly and subtly and he's totally disrupted black progression, black economic uh, fluidity, black educational opportunities as far back as the 70s, voting against busing, blocking busing, uh, a bunch of other things that he did long before he authored that crime bill and pushed that crime bill through that we're still suffering from. And yet we're considering this guy. Why? Because he's not Trump. Number one is a man's character is never um, contingent upon another. What does that mean? When I'm measured at the end of my life, I'm going to be measured by what I did not by what someone else did or didn't do or how I measured up to someone else. You, Anytime you're measuring a person's character and you've got to refer to someone else to put them in context, then it's a problem because that should be a clear understanding of what's right, what's wrong, what's expected. So if as a husband, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a husband and as a father, I don't have to be compared to any other man. I'm going to be compared to the standard. I'm going to be compared to the standard of provision, the the standard of protection, the standard of engagement and involvement and care and concern and all those other things that go along with being a father and a husband. Same thing with you being a leader in the community. You're going to be measured by a standard of engagement and protection, not by uh, how you measure up against someone else. When I've got to sit up and say, OK, at least this person isn't Trump, then it says he he's really screwed us, but he ain't screwed us like this. And the truth of the matter is he's probably screwed us more because he's had law a lot more time to do it. But that's just something I wanted to bring out. Trump is doing exactly what I said. I'm not pulling for the dude at all. I'm not pulling for Biden at all. I am looking at some other alternatives. I'm really looking at it. And the thing is we don't understand political science enough to understand the importance of valuing our vote enough not to give it to someone who doesn't deserve it. We even enter in relationships the same way. We say we know our worth, but we give people who don't deserve our time, our time. And we end up in bad situations because of it. And we've been doing the same thing, having the same dysfunctional relationship with Democrats for, oh, what, 60, 60, 70 years. It's time for us to change how we approach this thing. On that note, I'm going to get off of here and get in to do what I got to do. 
get back and finish up my day. But I had to stop by and say that. You guys have a great day. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for all the love and support that you have given uh, and sent my way and my wife's way and the organization's way. Now, I want to just take a brief moment to remind you that we still need your support. We still need your help. Go to the description box of one of our videos and see how you can support the work we're doing. Keep supporting, keep loving us, and we're going to keep loving you back. Have an awesome day. Talk Real about talk, I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements.